Good morning. Welcome to the Old Shed Workshop. I'm Mike. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time here, I'll invite you to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on future videos. Today, I want to share with you my routed table fence with dust extraction. I'll show you how I set it up. I'll show you how I put it together. And in the end, I'll give you some measurements uh, to give you an idea how to proceed for your fence, for your router table. So let's move the camera and I'll show you how I set it up. At the beginning of all this process was the question of how do I make a fence for the router table? So I already have a fence for my table saw. And the router table is an extension of the table saw. So it occurs to me, let's use the fence from the table saw. So I, I make this box and I can, I put it up against the, uh, the table saw fence. And now I have a movable fence for the router. So I'll show you how I set that up. But for purposes of explanation, I cut out a small half moon in the, the fence front and a small half moon in the bottom uh, of the, the pot that slides, the sled, I guess you'd call it. I center that on the route a bit. This is 27 inches long, which is a pretty standard length for at least the older table saws like mine uh, that's for the uh, the size of the table so the way i do this is i take a little piece of scrap wood and a fence clamp and i just attach this router table fence which is just really a box i attach that with a piece of little piece of scrap wood because you don't want to damage the front of that fence. That's critical. Okay. And I'll show you how I set up the dust collection. Bear with me a second. This is just hose from a shop vac. It goes into a Fern Co plumbing connector. This is a two by one and a half inch uh fern co connector everything in my shop dust collection wise uh goes right to my two-stage dust collection setup and i'll put a link above if you want to see the video on how i uh built the two-stage dust collection system everything all my smaller tools whether it's my oscillating sander my drill press my band saw everything has these connectors on it so that I can connect a shop vac hose that goes to my two-stage dust collection system. So with that connected, now I'm ready to cut my piece. I have a remote switch. I have the dust collection system plugged into one outlet. I have the router plugged into another outlet. So when I'm ready to uh, route my workpiece, all I have to do is push the button to turn on the dust collection and the second button to turn on the router. I do have a router bit in there now, but for safety's sake, I'm leaving it down below the table level. So I turn on the dust collection and then the router. When I'm finished routing my piece, I, I can turn them both off without having to move from my workplace. And these little compartments that I have here come in handy. I have my handle for my uh, router lift. I have the other handle to pop out the inserts. And I have a couple of uh, height jigs that you can adjust your router bits. I've had these for probably over 30 years. That's all you need. 
I don't use any fancy digital anything. I use these, I set up, and the most important thing is make a test cut and see how it looks. So that's how I came up with a fence for the router table. If you want to make plunge cuts, say you want to do a mortise and you want to put a start and a stop spot on your fence, all you have to do is put a piece of masking tape across Mark your start and your stop spots, and then when you're done with that particular project, throw the tape away. So I don't have any marring uh, marks on the front of the fence at all. It's highly waxed. I wax it with the, uh, I can show you, I have it right here. I use this Varathane paste finishing wax, and uh, everything's waxed with that. My sled uh the router table fence my outfeed table everything is highly waxed with that it makes everything slide nicely there was no need to put an additional piece on here so i had something white to mark on simple as a piece of uh masking tape so i'm gonna take this apart i'm gonna give you some measurements that work for me and hopefully it'll get you started on maybe making a a router table fence for yourself. I want to give you some measurements and tell you how I put this uh, router table fence together. I started out making a box. This is uh, birch plywood. I had a piece uh, hanging around back when we could all afford to buy birch plywood. So you can see I did the front and the back. I ripped them at the same time on the table fence. I'm sorry, on the table saw, uh, made a bottom, a couple of sides, the same width as the bottom. And then I wanted a place to be able to put, you know, my other things here. So uh, I decided to make these little compartments and I needed a place to put my dust extraction adapter. So I added a piece, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, uh, this is a piece of three-quarter inch pine. Uh, it's about three-quarters of an inch high. Truth be told, nobody wants to admit their mistakes. Uh, I should have made this a little bit higher. I ended up with a little gap in the, on the top. So what I did is I took a piece of uh, that cushiony double-faced tape, and I just put a little piece of scrap on here to seal that opening on the top. Save yourself a little time. If you buy the uh, uh, adapter, make sure you go high enough to get a good seal. Again, the, the standard for table saw uh, uh, side wing tables, at least on these old saws like mine, was 27 inches. So this is 27. I wanted to accommodate the adapter and the Fernco adapter. And in order to get that high enough, I could only come up, as you can see, two and a half inches on the original box, this being the back. Okay. So that fern call adapter clears the top of the back piece that goes against the table saw fence. Okay. So I drilled two holes. These are three eighths inch holes to accommodate the fence clamps, okay? In the front overall size that I needed to uh, account for the adapter is three and five eighths. I'm sorry, three and three eighths, okay? So make sure you have enough height on the front of your fence uh, like I said, I wasn't going to redo the whole thing for, you know, a sixteenth of an inch. So there you have it. Uh, I put links below for the adapter and for some other things that I've mentioned here in this video. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you uh, like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications for future videos. And also, if there's any of these items that you're interested in purchasing, I'd appreciate it if you'd use my links 
from the description below. As an Amazon affiliate, I get a small commission. It's, it's not much, but every little bit helps. And um, thanks. We'll see you on the next one.